The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard. I will give you what is just. So they went off. Then he went out around noon, and around three o'clock he did likewise. And going out about five o'clock, he found others still standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. And when those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them got the usual daily wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones only worked an hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Hope you're all well today. Today is a very beautiful feast, isn't it? The feast of the, the Queenship of our Blessed Lady. So we'll begin, uh, as always, with our prayer to St. Monica, bringing to mind all those uh, with whom we'd like to share the, the gift of faith, that the Lord will grant them this. St. Monica, troubled wife and mother, Many sorrows pierced your heart during your lifetime, yet you never despaired or lost faith. With confidence, persistence, and profound faith, you prayed daily for the conversion of your beloved husband, Patricius, and your beloved son, Augustine. Grant me that same fortitude, patience, and trust in the Lord. Intercede for me, dear Saint Monica, for these people. and grant me the grace to accept his will in all things through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I knew a woman once, much the same age as myself, who developed a disease that made her always tired. You know what that is, maybe yourselves, M-E. And some friends invited her to go to Lourdes, and she said she wouldn't go because she didn't want to go as uh, in a wheelchair. But eventually she gave in, and she went. Now, when Our Lady appeared in Lourdes in 1858, you can tell me the story as well as I can tell you. She told St. Bernadette to, to dig up a, a source, and to this day, that stream, although undiscovered before 1858, flows in gallons and gallons of water. And Our Lady told Bernadette to get the sick to come and to bathe in, uh, in that stream. So maybe some of you here have been there, I expect. Have you? And uh, it's quite a, a beautiful experience that even if you're not sick, you sometimes feel a great sense of peace coming out of it. In any way, uh, my friend went, and when she came out, she felt no different but she did feel to herself a sense of thankfulness all of a sudden, which surprised her for her family and friends, for their kindness. And the next day she felt optimistic for the first time in a long time. And the third day she walked and she had no need for the wheelchair anymore. I knew another man who was a car salesman and he was engaged to be married when he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. And he went to Lourdes the next year. Of course, the, the engagement was off then because this is a, a terminal disease. And 
nothing happened the first year. And the second year, he said, I wasn't cured, but I was healed. And I must admit that he was the happiest man I ever came across, apart from some bouts of frustration at being there in his bed, not being able to move, and constantly declining. So he was given a, a, another type of miracle, maybe not the miracle that we'd like, but nonetheless, another type of miracle of Lourdes, not to be physically healed, but to get great grace in his sickness. So today is the Feast of the Queenship of Mary. And St. Albert the Great, the great Dominican saint and teacher of St. Thomas Aquinas, once wrote that the, what a queen means, the name of a queen, indicates mercy and care for her subjects, and especially the poor. And all of us, I suppose, are in that category. So I just want to talk a little bit about Our Lady today in honor of her feast, and also because she's one of the great treasures of our lives, of course. So all over Italy, if ever you go on holidays to Italy, you'll see these places, and they have very ancient icons of Our Lady, and they'll say, this was painted by St. Luke, the, who, who also wrote the Gospel. And the scholars will say, well, not really. And that's okay. In a, uh, in a skeptical age, we can agree. But it's true that St. Luke was an artist. And it's true that Our Lady was his subject. But his work of art was his, the Gospel that he wrote. And I'll tell you this. If you read St. Luke's Gospel, you'll often find yourself getting lost because you're saying, what parable are we on now? Or what miracle are we on now? Because he goes so fast through the whole thing. And so he tells the story of the angels appearing to the shepherds on Christmas night. And they appear, and he tells the whole story, even though for us it's a big story, beautiful in our imagination. For He tells it in just about five lines, that the angels appear, the shepherds are afraid, the angels make this announcement, of the, the Christ child, all of a sudden the heavens are filled with the angels singing the Gloria and the shepherds go off and they see the Christ child and they come back telling everyone. And then he stops. And he focuses, very, which is very rare for him in a gospel that moves so quickly. And he says, but Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. So St. Luke is rushing, rushing, rushing through these deeds and these life of Jesus. And then he stops and he gets us to read about Mary and her heart. And he'll go on and he'll tell the story again of the presentation in the temple and then the finding of the temple. And then he'll stop. And he says this. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. That's Jesus to Mary and Joseph. And, the, and he says, and his mother kept all these things in her heart. So St. Luke, in his gospel, as he goes through, he wants you and me to look at Mary's heart. And later on then again, he'll, when he speaks about the parable, the parable of the sower, you know what the parable of the sower is, where the sower goes out and he sows the seed and it falls into rough ground or to rocks or to thorns and then some into fertile soil. And when, he's, when he says that, Jesus in, in St. Luke's Gospel says this, that the seed falling in, into the good soil are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bring forth fruit with patience. And just after he's mentioned this honest and good heart, who's the next character who enters into the Gospel? Only Mary. She comes looking for Jesus with her, with her mother, and uh, sorry, with uh, Jesus's brothers and sisters. So St. Luke brings us back again and again to Mary and to the, the beauty of her heart. And it's often been said that St. Luke gets the details of his gospel from Mary herself. That's a, a tradition. How does St. Luke know about Jesus' annunciation and birth? And we say that he heard it from St. Luke, or sorry, from Mary herself. That might or might not be true. But what's certainly true is that St. Luke was very impressed with her beauty. Whether he met her or whether he met somebody who knew her, she is for him that, that beautiful heart that is the ideal disciple. And it's the same thing again 
when the Annunciation scene, the angel comes to, to Mary and says to her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And St. Luke goes on and says, But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And so what is St. Luke doing here for us? He's telling us, look at that greeting. If Mary was troubled by the greeting, what is that greeting? And that greeting is that she is full of grace. And what does this mean? For a long time, I suppose I never thought about it. And then I remember once upon a time I was working in a school with little children who were making their first communion. And I didn't really know them because I was only popping in and out to give a hand to the teachers. But then I heard the two teachers talking to each other. And they were talking about this little girl and what a beautiful girl she is. And I said, well, I don't know her. But then the first communion day came and I met this girl and her parents. And I remember in particular her mother was the most simple of people, but bubbling over with laughter. And they were telling me about little things they did with the children. And I could see that they were really thinking, thinking people, the, the father and the mother. And then I said to myself, I suppose there must be something special about this little girl. And I think that's what, what are the, or at least the most obvious thing about when the angel says that Mary is full of grace, is that she is a gracious person. And maybe I'm getting more sentimental as I get old, but I see more and more gracious people out there. And I think that's what uh, God is saying to us when he says that, that Mary is full of grace. Of course, he's referring in a more complex way to her immaculate conception. But first and foremost, to the beauty of her character. That she must, must have been a most beautiful people, a most beautiful woman. And people in Nazareth, when they met Mary, they must have said, isn't she lovely? And that son of hers, oh, a beautiful child. And that's really the first and foremost thing that we're saying about Mary being full of grace. And when she appeared in Lourdes, St. Bernadette, who at this stage didn't know who this woman was, appearing to her every week, was asked, was she beautiful? And she said, oh, so beautiful, you'd die again to see her. And it's true as well in Fatima as well, when Our Lady appears at one stage, Lu Lucia, her mother was um, attacking her, basically. The mother was so angry that what she thought were these lies about seeing this woman. And when Our Lady appeared, she said to Lu Lucia, she said, are you sad? Are you upset? Don't be upset. And it was very beautiful what, what in Lucia's words, this witness of Mary as being such a caring mother. And this is what St. Luke as well in his gospel is trying to bring, a, bring across to us as well, the beauty of Mary's heart. Maybe some of you, if you haven't been to Lourdes, have seen the film The Song of Bernadette. So um, you being Californians over here, I suppose I can communicate with you by, by movies. But um, Song of Bernadette was made in the 1940s by a Jew who uh, got out of the concentration camps and promised that he would make a movie in honor of Our Lady if he, if he got out. So he kept his promise. And there's a beautiful scene in it after uh, St. Bernadette has dug the stream and, and there's this child in the movie who's been sick the whole way long and then he's put by his mother into the stream and you, next you hear the women of the town talking and they say, and then we heard a cry, but it wasn't a sickly cry, it was the cry of a healthy child, a fine healthy child. And it's a very beautiful mo moment. I remember being there with my mother and I caught her eye as we were watching this and she said, Ah, oh, it's very touching, isn't it? And then if, about the year later, I was in Switzerland where I was doing a bit of study and uh, an American Dominican was looking for a movie to pass a, a Sunday night relaxing. And I said, I have the Song of Bernadette in my room. And he said, oh no, I can't watch the Song of Bernadette. I always cry. And I knew what he, mean, I knew what he meant, that even though it's a an old movie, not our style. Nonetheless, to come near to the beauty of Mary is something that would make us weep with joy. 
and weep with joy at the beauty of the gifts that we have received from God in this wonderful story of the Catholic faith. The, the beauty of the faith that lets us know about how wonderful God is and how wonderful his mother is. The beauty of the church for all her, her troubles that honors her and has honored her throughout 2,000 years and the beauty of this mother's heart. This mother's heart, all the beauty that she has brought into the lives of Catholics since St. John the Evangelist took her into his home and Saint, since St. Luke wrote again and again about the beauty of her heart. So let's finish with our prayer to St. Jude, placing all our petitions in his special care. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, and particularly its request. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. Saint Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.